In this video, I'll be explaining and demonstrating a special test used in the assessment of first rib hypomobility. It doesn't have a fancy name, it's literally just a first rib mobility assessment. To perform a first rib mobility assessment, the patient will be positioned in supine, and with the patient's head in neutral, we're going to approximate the T1 transverse process by moving vertically downward from the patient's mastoid process. Now, the mastoid process we're not going to be able to see in a frontal view very well, but it's approximately right here, and on an actual patient it's behind their ear. right? So you go vertically downward from this, and this line right here is just barely lateral to the T1 transverse process. So in most patients it doesn't approximate the transverse process of T1 perfectly, but it's pretty close. And it turns out that this site right here is approximately the site of first rib palpation, and in some people it might be just barely lateral, just millimeters lateral to this position. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to slide my palm face up underneath the patient's scapula. Now when we test the mobility of the first rib or mobilize it, we're doing so in an inferior and medial direction. So if I'm going to be testing or mobilizing the right first rib, I'm attempting to drive it towards the contralateral ASIS, okay? So that means I'll also put my hand in slightly at an angle in that direction. And my goal here is to put my second MCP, that's my joint between the proximal phalanx of the second digit and the second metacarpal, that joint right there, that's going to be in contact with the first rib. Okay, so I'll start off here in a little bit more of a supinated position, as you see right there. And now I've got some contact there, right hooking at the MCP joint. Okay, now as we'll see later in the video, I would also rotate the patient's head contralaterally. So I'm testing or mobilizing the right side, so I'd have the patient rotate their head to the left. Okay, and then once in this position, I'm going to pronate my hand slightly, not all the way, but as I pronate, notice that I get myself into better contact with that first rib, okay? And then I can mobilize in the inferior and medial direction toward the contralateral ASIS, like that. Now we've already talked about approximating the T1 transverse process and finding the site of the first rib. And once you're comfortable with where the first rib is, then you can slide your hand under the patient's scapula with the palm facing up and your second MCP should be in line with the first rib. So that'll look like this. So I can always lift the patient up a little bit, slide my hand under, palm facing up, and then you can see right around here my second MCP joint is right in line with that first rib. Okay? And you want to make sure that it's firmly in there. There should be no space between your second MCP and the first rib site. Now from here, you can rotate the patient's head away from the test site, so contralateral rotation. We're assessing the mobility of the right first rib, so that would mean she'd rotate her head to the left. This can be done actively, or we can passively guide her into left rotation of the neck. And what this does is it places that first rib on the right in a better position to not only assess its mobility, but if we wanted to actually mobilize it from there, also a better position to mobilize. Now when we assess first rib mobility, or eventually perform a mobilization on the first rib, we want to make sure that our contact between our second MCP and the first rib itself is as tight as possible. So from here what we'll do is slightly pronate our hand. Okay? So there's that pronation right there. And what that essentially does is it brings our second MCP into tighter contact with the posterior aspect of the first rib. And once we're here, we have that really tight contact, we are ready to mobilize. Now, when we're assessing first rib mobility, we're not just trying to push the rib inferiorly, we're actually trying to drive it both inferiorly and slightly medially. So if this red X right here is the right first rib, you can imagine trying to drive it to the left ASIS, or in general, the contralateral ASIS. Obviously that's inferior, but it also has a slight medial vector, as you can see here. And that'll look something like this. So attempting to drive that first rib inferiorly and medially. 
down towards the contralateral ASIS. And again, that force is coming from the second MCP area against the posterior aspect of the first rib. And a positive test here is going to be a side-to-side -side difference in mobility, more specifically hypomobility on one side compared to the other, especially if that hypomobility is associated with a hard end feel. Also, if this reproduces any pain or any signs and symptoms consistent with thoracic outlet syndrome. Now, in reality, when you push the rib down, that's actually going to relieve symptoms, theoretically, of thoracic outlet syndrome. But when the rib comes back up on the rebound, it could theoretically increase some of the symptoms consistent with thoracic outlet syndrome. All right, so let's suppose that I just did a first rib mobility assessment on both sides. The left side not shown here was normal, but the right side was associated with a hard end feel, meaning hypomobility, and there was some associated pain with the test. It might make sense from here, while they're already in this position, to go directly into the treatment, which is a mobilization. And that's because the mobilization and the test are pretty much performed identically. All the setup, the hand placement, the contact, all that is identical. The only difference is in how we apply the force. Okay? So the force is still in the inferior direction with a slight medial push towards the contralateral ASIS. But now instead of just a straight push to assess mobility, we're going to do this with graded mobilizations. So those graded mobilizations are still going to be in the inferior direction with a slight medial push. So they'll just look like this. Okay? No real difference. Except now we need to grade them appropriately. right? Because if our goal is to decrease pain, which should be done initially, that's going to be grades one and two mobilizations, right? If our goal is to increase range of motion, we need to go a little bit deeper. It's going to be grades three and four, okay? And I'll be showing you a first rib manipulation in a separate video. But again, manipulations typically are going to be done to both decrease pain and increase range of motion. And in terms of dosing, the grades one through four mobilizations, you do three to five sets. 45 to 60 seconds per set, and always follow the test, treat, retest model. Again, when we look at the setup and the mechanics of the graded mobilizations compared to the test, there's no difference. The only overall difference is in how you grade the force, whether it's for pain reduction or increasing range of motion. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. 